Hello, welcome to opening day. I'm Big Italy 42 here with Scott Mailwig, Sports 25 to Life. And got a lot of exciting things going on with the new season. And uh, I'm sure you're just as excited as I am with uh, all the nonsense going on in the NBA. Finally get some stability with MLB. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been tough in NBA lately. I always have a good time during March and April, though, because it, it's just fun to be able to do all that research. But I'm really happy to have some nice weather and baseball starting for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start things off here. We're going to go position by position, talking draft kings here, of course. And your obvious top option here at starting pitcher, Clayton Kershaw. If you're playing cash games, he's obviously your best bet. Pretty big favorite. Not the Padres we've seen in the past, but still a solid matchup for him. So if you're playing cash games, is Kershaw pretty much a lock for you? Yeah, I mean, as we saw last season, you're really asking for trouble fading him in cash games. It's it's really, really tough to come up with anything else. Um, the only other guy I'm really looking at is I think Kluber is a little bit underpriced on DraftKings. 9800 there is like... It's a pretty good price. I mean, that's almost 3000 savings from Kershaw. It, it just feels more like a tournament play to me than a cash game play, especially on opening day when you like really don't know what's going to go on with a lot of these teams and guys hitting in new spots and stuff like that. Um, that's really the only other guy I'd consider, but I'm probably going to go with Kershaw. Yeah, and I mean, there's a ton of options. Obviously, all the aces on the mound today and yeah. Kyle Kendrick. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. pl- plenty of good options today, but I mean, those are two of the best, of course. Max Scherzer is probably going to be a popular play, but I think tonight I probably won't have a ton of him just because he does have some fly ball tendencies, and I think I'll just go with the uh, the more dominant pitcher than Clayton Kershaw for me. Uh, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you got to go cheap, I'll ask your take here. I'll throw out one guy, see who what you think, and if you've got another cheap guy, because obviously you're not going to be able to pay for both Kluber and Kershaw and have any sort of a lineup along with those guys. So Henderson Alvarez, $6,200. Not a high strikeout guy at all, but playing at home against an Atlanta lineup that's not exactly looking tough right now. So I think if I'm going to go cheap, then Alvarez is the way I'm going. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the best option. I mean, I looked at Cole Mentor a little bit. With San Francisco's lineup, there's not a lot to be scared of other than Posey there. But, I mean, I just don't feel really great about him. I think Alvarez is probably a little bit safer. Like you mentioned, Atlanta's lineup is is not looking strong right now. Yeah. And uh, neither guy a high strikeout pitcher, not a high upside guy, either one of them. But, you know, likely that neither one of those guys will kill your team if you slot him in there to get a right. couple extra bats. So let's go ahead and move on to catcher here. We've got your obvious top option if you're going to pay up is going to be Buster Posey. I'm not paying up if at catcher with uh, so many other good options and obviously all the aces on the mounds. Jonathan Lucroy is going to be a popular play at $4,300 going against Kyle Kendrick, who I've already made fun of once. There's going to be more to come there. He's by far the worst pitcher on the board tonight. I mean, he would be the most pitcher most nights. So Brewer's going to be the most popular stack, and uh, Luke Roy's going to definitely be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think Posey's a pretty solid play today as long as you're not playing Cole Minter. Um, I really can't argue with Luke Roy against Kendrick. Uh, John Jaso's hitting leadoff, I believe, for the Rays today, which is uh, one of my interesting value options. Um, I'm probably going to look at him really hard if I'm not paying up for Posey or Luke Roy. I I just like the leadoff spot as far as catcher goes. It's it's really nice to have that. You might get an extra bat out of him or whatever. I like the matchup a little bit. That's probably the way I'm going if I'm looking for some value there. Yeah, and I don't blame you there. And that's that's another great thing about MLB is we get news early. We've got some lineups. I got up at about 6 o'clock this morning. There was already a couple lineups coming out soon after. So we already know that. And uh, if you want to go one other cheap guy that I'm considering, I probably do prefer Jaso in that leadoff spot. But Carlos Ruiz against... Clay Buckholz, who we know is due to implode at any time. He's at 3400 Yeah, that's a nice price for sure. All right, moving on next to first base. And my man crush, my favorite first baseman in the league, Jose Abreu, $4,800. Obviously, Jordana Ventura got some great stuff, but pretty wild pitcher. Not consistent. Does give up too many walks. Base runners doesn't pitch too deep into games too often. Gets high in that pitch count. And Jose Abreu has the power in any park despite a lesser park factor here, to put one in the seats, maybe two in the seats. So if I'm paying up at first base, I'm going to Abreu. How about you? Um, I like Abreu. Can't argue with him at all. Uh, Edwin Encarnacion is the other guy I'm looking at in that price range. I think he's 4900 today. Right, basically the same price. Um, 
he's hit right-handers really well for a right-hander. I think he's one of the better right-handed on right-handed hitters, especially power-wise. I think he's only behind Cabrera over the last two or three years in home runs against righties. Uh, Tanaka, I'm not overly concerned about him facing Tanaka. I think it's a pretty decent matchup for him. Um, he's, he's a little banged up, and I think that's what's leading me to look at Encarnacion a little bit more. I love Abreu. I'm wearing a White Sox hat right now, so I can't argue with him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, obviously, like you mentioned, Tanaka kind of banged up. He's not 100%. His velocity kind of down. So I'm with you there. I'm really not concerned about avoiding that matchup, especially in that, that ballpark, that short yeah. porch. I think uh, uh, if we're talking about more first baseman, Lind is my other one that I really like that's a bit lower of a price. Um, facing Kendrick, of course. I'm sure this is the one you were going to bring yeah. up, too. So, I mean, that's just such a good matchup. It's really hard to pass that up at 4,100 on DraftKings. Um, I mean, lefty-righty facing the worst pitcher on the slate. I mean, it's just it's a fantastic matchup for him. Yeah, and Lind, Lind has made his career on hitting righties pretty well. Yeah. So, you know, you got to like that. And he's going to be a pretty popular play. So if he goes and has a big game there and you didn't slot him in a couple of your tournament lineups there, you're going to be behind quickly with uh, – and any Brewers fade completely could either pay off really quickly or really could just crush you. But yeah. I won't be fading the Brewers. Not a chance. Not a yeah, is there anyone else you like uh, as far as cheap guys at first base? I mean, I looked at Brandon Belt a little bit. Um, I, I don't love it. It's it's a decent matchup for him, but it's not my favorite. Ike Davis might be the other guy I would punt with. Yeah, those are the only two guys I'd really be looking at. Um, depending on his lineup spot, I don't think Logan Morrison would be a terrible play. He's at 3500 I'm not a big fan of Jared Weaver at all. I like to target guys against him. And Seattle at home, especially against a righty, is a, is a situation that I love. And I'll get to a couple of that, those guys also here in a minute. But I like that spot for the Seattle Bats. Yeah, definitely. All right, next up we got second base. And Robinson Cano, your most expensive option. He's a guy that I like a decent amount today. Um, I like one of his teammates better. But... I do like to target Jared Weaver. He struggled at the end of last year and uh, just not the pitcher that he once was. Not saying I'm necessarily going to be paying up for Cano, but if I do, I like him. Um, a tournament play that I like here, not an ideal matchup, but Brian Dozier against David Price. You don't love the matchup, but he's got power. He's batting second. And uh, we've seen Brian, or Brian Price. I'm thinking Cincinnati Reds. I'm, I'm being Homer here. <laughs> David Price. When David Price doesn't have it going, you know, he's, he's pretty wild, and he can, he's prone to give up a couple of big innings. So not saying that's going to happen, but I don't mind Dozier in a tournament at 4K. Yeah, uh, the guy I like at second base is Utley. Um, yeah. I always like him when he's healthy. He's facing a right today. Buck Holtz, like you mentioned, has been a roller coaster over the last couple of years, and you never know when he's going to blow up. And, I mean, Utley's a guy I just love to play all the time. He's just so consistent as long as he's healthy. And while he's healthy, I mean, he's been great. He's been a really good April hitter. Over his career, I really like Utley today. I'm pretty much just locking him in at second base, I think. Yeah, yeah, and I don't blame you for that. I mean, I do like that matchup there. And like I said, if the Phillies have a big game like they did on opening day last year, then Utley's going to definitely be a big part of that. So yeah. I like that call. Um, a popular play who kind of lost a little bit of his luster, now batting the seventh hole, uh, Scooter Jeanette, 3,800. A lot of people will be on him. I'm going to be on him a lot less now that he's batting that low. I don't like to play guys batting below five, six at worst. And lineups because they just lose so much value but i think you do much worse than him if you're paying down yeah especially at his price yeah absolutely uh moving on now to the hot corner you've got josh donaldson your most expensive option he's had a huge spring i believe it was five home runs and uh now in his new spot in toronto uh, i think he's obviously tournament only at 4600 not a guy i'm really going to be paying up for you got some other guys. Once again, going back to the Brewers, the Ramos Ramirez is going to be a popular play at four thousand two hundred dollars. And um, you got some other options, but my favorite on the day here at, sh at third base, Kyle Seager, forty one hundred. If you play MLB DFS before, you know Seager versus righty and Seager at home. Today we get both. I love Kyle Seager at forty one hundred. Yeah, him and Chase Headley at forty one hundred are the two guys I'm looking at for the most part. Uh, I like Headley against a right-handed pitcher in Hutchinson. His price is pretty solid. It's going to be a tough choice there when they're both 4,100, though. I'm probably going to mix and match them a little bit, depending on who I'm pitching and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. And there's really not a lot of cheap guys I like here at third base. I don't mind Manny Machado. You know, he's got significant upside when he gets it going, um, coming off an injury last year. But at 3,900, I think he makes for a good tournament option. But outside of him, cheaper, I'm really not going to be searching for value too much at third base. No, I don't think I will be either. There's just not a lot there. Absolutely. Um, next up, we've got shortstop 
Troy Tulowitzki is 5K today at Milwaukee. His splits home to road. Obviously, he's still got good numbers everywhere, but significant drop-off, as you would expect, moving away from course field. Um, a fine matchup in a contact against a contact pitcher in Kyle Loesch, but really don't think I'm going to be paying 5K for any shortstop today. Yeah, it's really tough, too, when he's not at home. Um, that price is so dependent on his home stats, and it, it just makes it really tough, even though he's got pretty decent matchup there. Um, Jimmy Rollins, I might just play this... Uh, Philadelphia infield or the middle infield. I like the matchup here with Rollins hitting against the right handed Shields. Um, oh, sorry, Dodgers, correct. Um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, but I really like that matchup versus Shields and San Diego. Um, I like his price being under 4K on DraftKings. It's really solid. Um, the stolen bases are always a nice plus with him. Outside of that, I'm not loving shortstop today. I might just like take someone really cheap like Everett Cabrera against Archer. Um, I think that's really solid too. Yeah, yeah, I like that call as well. I mean, Cabrera's got a really nice price here at, um, I can't even find it, $3,200. Yeah, he's really cheap. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one other guy I want to mention right around that price, it also depends on where his he's batting in the order. We've seen him anywhere from 2 to 8 before. Jose Ramirez at $3,400. We saw he was a popular play last year at times, kind of a plug-and-play guy, and uh He's got a little bit of upside, too. So if he's that up near the top of the order, I don't mind him either. Yeah, that's a good call, especially if he's at the top of the order. That feels really nice. Yeah. Yeah, last year, uh, quite a few of us made some money off him batting in that two-hole, just kind of slotting him in and then building your lineup elsewhere. Yeah. All right, moving on here, we've got outfields. Obviously, a ton of top options here, as there always are. You've got Carlos Gomez, one of the best matchups, the best matchup on the board, leading off at 5K. You've got um, Bryce Harper is cheap at 4,200. He's going to be a popular play as well. Yes. I like John Carlos Stanton against Julio Tehran. Julio Tehran, obviously a very good pitcher, but does struggle with keeping the ball on the ground. He's got very high fly ball rates, and as we know, Stanton with an insane amount of power, especially at home. So those are those are some of my favorites there up top. Who else are you looking at here at uh, in the outfield? Uh, you mentioned Gomez already. I like Ryan Braun in that matchup too. Uh Hard to argue with either one of those guys towards the top of the Milwaukee order against Kendrick. Um, Jacoby Ellsbury against Hutchinson is another lefty I like against Hutchinson. Um, I'm targeting a lot of lefties against him in Toronto today. Uh, one of the other guys I kind of like is Hanley Ramirez. I don't know how I feel about him overall. I really like his upside, but I'm not sure how I feel about the matchup there. Yeah. Um, the price is pretty solid, though, too. He's one of those guys that like I kind of like a lot of things about him, but I don't really love anything. Yeah, it's, it's a, it seems like one of those situations where it seems like an ideal situation. He should have right. a good year, but we've seen it with Hanley Ramirez before. When he's healthy, he's great. Maybe he's not completely healthy. I mean, it's 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 a risk, but, I mean, he, he's got significant upside, and I like that yeah, exactly. that price. Um, Adam Eaton is another guy who uh, is getting some getting some talk here. He's going to be leading off against Ventura, $3,800. He's a nice contact hitter, guy that gets on base. Obviously, we know some big bats behind him, LaRoche, Abreu, so some chance to score some runs. And if Ventura, if bad Ventura shows up today, then we can see a nice little White Sox stack being sneaky. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the other cheap guys I like is Ben Revere for Philly. Um, he's a little bit pricier than I wanted him to be on DraftKings. I think he's up at 3900 I was hoping he was going to be like 35 or something like that. Um, I just like the I just like that whole Phillies offense against Buckholz. That's how I, I just feel really good about that today for some reason. I don't know if it's I just don't think Buckholz is going to have a good year. I'm not a huge Buckholz fan, but um, if you're just trying to pay up for Kershaw and not take a second um, really strong starting pitcher, I think Revere is a decent value option. We're going to need to find a couple more guys um, to save some money there, but. But that's an interesting play to me. I just really wish he was a couple hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah, and I really do like that call as well. I mean, stolen base is really heavily weighted, especially on DraftKings. Yeah. I believe they're five points. So, I mean, definitely some big upside with him. He's obviously got no power, but he really doesn't need power. And we saw it last year, like we keep talking about Buckles. I mean, the only team that seemed like he could pitch against was the Astros. Had two dominant games against them, <laughs> and they just got slaughtered by everyone else. So, I'm with you there. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Phillies hang up a big number on him once again today so revere probably going to be right in the middle of that getting himself a couple runs scored maybe an rbi we'll see but uh i, I definitely like his upside at that price too awesome all right that's going to wrap things up for us here today we're going to be doing these monday through saturday so make sure you check out all the other ones we've also got a fan duel podcast i do with spencer limbach up and we will see you guys again tomorrow